On the 18th of May, I went to an event at the Tate Modern and it was titled Nathalie Emmanuel in conversation with Simon Frederick. This was at the Turbine Hall at the Tate. It was organized by PhotoWorks. Natalie from the Game of Thrones fame and Simon from Black is the New Black, which was recently at the National Portrait Gallery. Obviously, they both have a body of work, but I was just saying this as these are the recent successes that I know of. It was a great conversation covering the highs and the challenges they face as people of color in the creative industry. It was only one hour long, but it was very inspirational. I managed to capture a few clips of Natalie talking about mental health, networking, and about her character being killed off in Game of Thrones. Very interesting conversation, so please do watch those clips. So yeah, right now you're going to see the short clips and then followed by the images of Natalie and Simon and a few of the surroundings which I was able to capture. So do enjoy, do leave a comment. If you were there at the event, let me know. I want to hear from you, so let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Till next time, please subscribe. Kashino NET. Laters. You know, those things drive you. Those things make you keep going um, because you don't, you don't want to go back there. And in those situations, you have to really take care of your mental health because I think people can see it as well. Like when you walk into a room, like for example, if you go home and you see like your significant other or your child or your roommate, if they're in a funky mood or they're carrying an energy, you know, you don't have to speak to them. And I believe that we carry those, that energy around with us in professional situations. So like taking care of you and like taking care of all of your health is really important because people pick up on it like instantly. We're very instinctive, intuitive creatures. So yeah, sorry, I had to mention yoga. Um, there's been a lot re written recently about your death. Yeah, well, that, that upset a lot of people, didn't it? It did. I mean, too. How did you feel about it? How did I feel? Sorry, I'm, I'm going straight in there with yeah, the Yeah, how did I feel about You mean the, my death or like the, the conversation around my death? Because I have a lot of feelings yeah, the, about all of it. The conversation around your death, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I knew that there would be a reaction, like, to straight up knew it. When I read the script, I was like, oh, okay. This is, this is going to be real. Like, I'm going to have to talk about this a lot. And, um, but it wasn't until it happened that I quite, I didn't realise the level in which it would happen. Like, the complete kind of outcry. The anger, the dis disappointment, the just, like, heartbreak, the love for her. Like, it was all just so intense and overwhelming. Like, to the point where I was like, I can't look at social media. I have to turn it off. It's just not good for me to be carrying all of these opinions, thoughts, you know, anger, whatever. It's just like a lot to deal with through this tiny rectangle thing directly into your eyes and into your brain. So I was like, no, I need to <laughs> put that down. Um, but like I said, it was expected because I am the only woman of color on Game of Thrones and one of two people of color on Game of Thrones. So there has been you know, um, a lot of people who are looking for representation within that show. I mean, goodness, like, I don't represent all people of colour. Like, we're an incredibly diverse group of people, like, you know, from many, many different backgrounds. So it's kind of crazy to think that to some people, you know, I represented them when I, I look nothing like them and we come from different cultural, religious, like, backgrounds, you know, whatever, like... But I, did, I represented people people who are used to being marginalized or othered in any way. Like, I represented those, and especially for women of color. And, like, obviously, that's a very general statement, and that's not necessarily true for every woman of color. But I felt that people were riding hard for Miss Sunday and Grey Worm, and they were riding hard for Miss Sunday. So when she died, all of that investment and just celebration of these two characters and the, you know, the devastation of it, like it all just came pouring at me. And it, I mean, it was beautiful and overwhelming and lovely, 
but also like just sparked really interesting conversation. And this is why representation within television and film is important. Like we shouldn't have to place all of our hopes and dreams and investment on one character out of a cast of however many people. Google, who was the first black man in space? It comes up, Google tells you, Guillaume Buford III. That's the guy's name, yeah? He went on to become the, uh, the, the second in command at NASA. But he wasn't the first black man in space. Three years before him, the first black man in space was a Cuban. General Arnaldo Almar uh, Mendez. Okay, he went up with the Russians three years earlier. Now, like I said before, stories get written in a certain way and the most important elements of the stories get missed out of the story. Anyway, next question. <laughs> uh, so I kind of gave crash the discussion. So first I just want to say respect to both of you. It's kind of amazing because I wasn't expecting this. So respect to both of you for having like an accessible manner with the public at an event like this. Um, pragmatically, I'm a photographer, so I want to just ask for both of you actually like, have you got any golden rules or pragmatic golden tips for a visual artist, photographer, at all, to be honest, at this point, yeah. Uh, doing what? Um, photography, documentary photography, urban landscapes and everything. But then, I mean, just to make it accessible to the rest of the public, like visual eyes, like just golden tips. It doesn't have to be anything specific, just something pragmatic or relative to your experiences or your work. Okay. Um, first tip that I have is, um, when you're making, as a photographer, when you're making work, Okay, as a black photographer, okay. Doesn't matter. All right, then, okay, um, that's a whole other set of rules. Okay, all right, okay. I get you, I get you. All right, so, um, as a black photographer, um, one of the things that you have to do is to believe in your own work. Because many people will tell you that your work is not relevant. They will tell you that all day long. When I first started, uh, and I went to uh, look for an agent, um, I couldn't get an agent. I couldn't pay agents to represent me. They just didn't want to represent me. When I looked around at the guys that I admired, whose work that I was following, who were amazing photographers, they couldn't get an agent either. Now, at first I thought the industry was racist. And then I realized it was much deeper than that. It wasn't actually racism. What it was, was cultural bias. Okay? So, basically, around here, you'll be able to buy books from Dan Golding and, you know, uh, from many other types of photographers. But they had a particular aesthetic. And at the time, that was the aesthetic that the industry was looking for. Now, as a person of color, okay, and, and when I mean person of color, it could be that there are some Japanese people here, there are some Asian people here, there are some Indian people here. Everyone has a particular way in which we see color that is psychologically and culturally relevant to us. Yeah? But no one ever tells you that, no one ever teaches you that. Okay, and what happens is, is that uh, industries become cultural, visually culturally biased. Now I see that in photography, in all disciplines, and I also see it in film. Yeah, so my answer, my, my answer to your question is, is if your work is good, and when you look at your work and you print your work, if you feel something in your heart that makes your heart levitate, Okay, that's when you know your work is good. Yeah. yeah. Those of you who've experienced that know what I'm talking about. Those of you who haven't, keep pushing. Also, just a, not just about belief in yourself, it's also about so creating a network of friends, family, finding those people. Because obviously, I know some people don't have that support system. I was very, very lucky that I had the family unit that I had to elevate me when I needed that push. And so, Finding those people is that's probably the hardest part. But when you find them, that they can carry you forward and make that fear. You kind of share the fear a bit. You're like, okay, guys, we'll jump together. It's that sort of thing. And I think that's it's community. 
as well. Thank you.